revive us again. So your people can be rejoicing you. Psalm mm. 85 verse 6 says, Once you revive us again, so your people can rejoice in you. Mm. And I'm sure that this is the heart that we are longing for. Are we longing for a movement or some things that can happen and can bring the unity and the mission and the re revival of the body of Christ across the globe? Are we longing for so something that is going to happen that we see that the people will come back to the church and come back to call upon the name of the Lord as their Lord and Savior? And I'm sure that all of us as a Christian, we are longing for, for that day. And many organizations, many events are also praying for that. And I'm telling you, telling you that the time is now. That this is not by coincidence, but suddenly we so, have so many events talking about revival at the same time. Then we tell us about the signal and the thing that we have been praying and asking God. And now God said He is going to revive us again so that His people can rejoice in Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our brother, would you be just introduce a little bit yourself and your heart for the revivals? My name is Justin, and um, you know, revival is um, something that God's been putting in my heart for a very long time. It's not just revival, it's the hunger and the yearning um, for God. And, and you know, I was uh, pondering on it, and it was a verse in Esther, you know. Uh, Yes, Esther. That's the great revival. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, in the book of Esther, when we talk about Esther at that time, yeah. that the people of the Israelite was in a big trouble. Yeah. The, 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 the enemies tried to destroy them, tried to kill, all, and annihilate all of the people at that time. And then they begin to break a fast. They begin to pray and fast. And what happened? <laughs> For, for, for such a time as this, you know, that uh, in the story, um, you know, Esther was put in a place of royalty to marry him, and it was at the right time because if she hadn't been there, then the enemy could have used Haman, Haman mm -hmm. to wipe out all of Israel. Um, and God put Esther in that place for such a time and used her mightily to change the heart of the king and even got the king's guards um, to protect the Israelites and they had and they were able to protect themselves and they were also given the authority by the king to even take a plunder from those who were attacking them. So so I believe that um, and what and I believe that you know in this time of revival there is definitely going to be opposition, but you know I this uh, Philippians four thirteen you know I can do all things through Christ's strength. Amen. And because it is Christ who is in us, um, you know God He's the creator of the universe, and He's the one on our side, and He's the one, the all powerful creator. Gave us his armor, yes, which is impenetrable because you know he mm. he's unbeatable. <laughs> he's it's on good. our side. Amen. Come on. You Come on. know, and so and if any is coming at us, but we have God on our side, and because of that, um, you know, God's going to give us amazing opportunities. Um, um, for not just a specific partners and things like that, mm. but God is going to use this movement to bring about uh, more things that have never been done before. Amen. Amen. Yes, and that's what Brother Justin is mentioned about, is about the vision of 20%. Yes. 
When we talk about the vision 2050%, it means that we are praying that the church can be united together for unity, for mission and revival. And that in every way that we are going, every, whether, whether we're in our school, in our district, in our county, uh, in our cities and in our, in our nation, at least there will be an increase of 20% of the population will come to know Jesus. But at the same time, our just brother Justin just mentioned something that's very important. That whenever we are being under challenge, whenever we have the tough time, that is the time that we can see that the hands and the power of God to be at work in a very, very powerful time. You see that when the Israelite was in Egypt, and they was crying out because they was oppressed, they was in suffering, and they 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 don't know about the tomorrow. And the people in Egypt treat them very not very nice, okay, very cruel, and strip them from everything that they have. And that's why they begin to cry out to the Lord. And God begin to send Moses to bring the revival and the restoration in the life of the Israelite people. And they are happy and they begin to worship the Lord. And in the history of the Israelite, as in the book of Judges that we can see, that from one generation to another gener generation, that whenever they just walk away from the Lord and they was being oppressed by the enemies, and then whether it's the Philistine or the Midianites, so they was under that oppression. And at that time, they have no hope. They cannot do anything. And then they remember the God of their forefather. The God who has performed the miracles. The God who has done so many miracles, miraculous things. The God who has go gone before them and to show them the supernatural signs and power. And when they cry out, unto that God. God always sent someone to bring the revival and then to bring the restoration, to bring the blessing, to bring the deliverance upon the life of the people. How about our brother? What do you see that today that why we need the deliverance of God? What is the situation? Is the situation is still good for the people that we don't need? We just enjoy our life. Or oh, what are the things that we really, we really need God at this moment? Uh, we need to be a living and holy sacrifice. I think we just sacrifice once to God or once in a month or once in a year, give something to God thinking that's enough um, or just the, the simple church attendance once in a while. But no, God requires in Romans 12 verse 1, he wants a living and holy sacrifice. So when you're sacrificing, uh, it's to his standard. It's not to our standard. We don't call... Uh, we don't define holiness. We, we have to find it in scriptures. Mm. And holiness and, and anointings is to be set apart. So what is the ways that Jesus was uh, living in holy sacrifice to the Father? He did not count his life worthy at all to, to hold on to. He was willing to give it uh, away. So um, whatever is holding people back uh, from giving God their full 100%, I believe that's what the revival is going to do to people is to make them truly set apart and not be afraid to, to give everything to God, whether it's financial finances, whether it's giving away a job, giving away uh, a relationship that's toxic. God will revive that heart mm -hmm. so they won't be afraid to give anything to God. Amen. You see that many times today that when we see, begin to see that the great things that God has been doing in Africa, in Asia, in Indonesia, for some of one of the countries that, that, that have the largest number of the Muslim, the more the world most populated Muslim country in the world. And that it seems that impossible for Christianity to be growing in that country. But God has done miracles when the children of God are coming together in prayer, just like in the book of Esther, in the in the time of Esther, at that time that when the people come together in prayer, they know the situation, they know the suffering, they know that they are not going to get over the situation. At that time, they need the hand of God, and exactly the same thing that recently in Indonesia there is a great revival. And according to most of the people said, uh, Indonesia ha today has about at least about thirty percent of the public population are Christian. Can okay. you just can you just Im imagine about that one? 30% of the population and today the churches in Indonesia are praying that they can increase until 50% Let's do it Amen. September uh, I mean, yeah, 50% of the population will come to know Jesus Indonesian churches are praying, are working together and wherever we go in that Muslim country and you can find many big churches over there and today they are also sending missionaries to many nations of the world 
it's surprisingly and another country that we in the Korea. Maybe Korea, maybe some of us have heard about the largest church over there with Dr. David uh, Yang Yi Cho and many, many other uh, big churches over there. We heard about a lot about the prayer mountain. The revival also took place from those prayer mountains at the place of prayer. And God has blessed Korea and they have about 25% of the population come to know Jesus. And there, they are now the country only after the U.S. In terms of sending out the number of missionaries, wow. can you just imagine a country, South America, only have about 40 million people in their population, mm -hmm. and yet they are the number two country in the world that send the largest number of the missionary to all, all over the nation, and they, they you can find their missionary everywhere. They have been a blessing to many nations to build up the Bible school, to bless the community, and you name it, whatever what the our forefather has done with the mission strategy, they applied it all. So that is communist country. Okay, I just mentioned about the Muslim country, and the secondly is about uh, uh, a Buddhist country. How about communist country? And maybe some of you begin to hear to hear about back to Jerusalem. And I'm telling you today, China has about. 10% to 11% of the population are Christian. It's about 160 million believers strong in China. And it is double the number of the Communist Party members. And how do you do the back to, back to Jerusalem? Yes, and that's what that God is raising up this country. And if God can do for the Muslim country, God can do to can turn the Buddhist country and the communist country or atheist country, yes. God can also do the same thing in this nation. And yes, I think sir. God can do it much easier for this one. <laughs> yeah. That is impossible, right? Uh, you know, I, this is something that uh, God's been uh, talking to me about for a while. And it's the, the issue of denominationalism. And you know, the Scripture talks about, um, you know, um, a house divided, mm. a house that is divided will Can fall. Yes. You know, and today, in a way, the church is a little bit of a house divided because we separate each other through walls of denomination. It's not a little bit, it's so much divided. Yeah. 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 We separate each other through walls of denomination. And we're like, I'm not going to go to this church because this is a denomination or this denomination or this denomination. Mm. But what we, like, in, in order, for there to truly be revival, there has to we have to break off these denominational bar barriers. And I'm not yeah. saying to um, stop being Baptist or Presbyterian or Pentecostal. No, it's okay to have those denominations. Let's just come together, you know, as a body of Christ. I know. And, and in Luke chapter four, it, it shows that you know the disciples and, and the followers of Jesus were in one accord. At, that the yes. presence of God was so evident and the miracles were so evident that the city could not deny the presence of God moving there. Like, the Pharisees, no one could deny it. Amen. Yeah. There's power in the unity. And yeah. when the body of Christ are coming together, we are going to see that great things mm -hmm. are going to happen. And thank you for that, brother. That's a good point. How about you, sister Elsie? What is, are you expecting something in the church to be changed? Or the revival will make that changes in the life of the people. Yeah, um, while you guys were sharing, I just, the Lord gave me a picture of an analogy of um, God's doing CPR on a lot of people uh, right yeah. now. And yeah. He's just trying to bring us back. So with this revival, He's trying to bring back what is dead. Yeah. It's not active, it's not moving. Yes, that is. Um, and, I, and I know God is doing that within us as leaders and within our churches and areas so that the whole body could now be revived back. And God's so patient because he's just going and going mm -hmm. and going, waiting for us to wake up and, and answer the call or the revival that he's speaking right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and like um, Christian and Justin mentioned, it's about that hunger. It's about that hunger for the mm -hmm. Lord. It's about seeking yeah. his face. And, you know, it, it's kind of easy for us as people, we get kind of tired. You know, kind of tired of just praying. Oh, Lord, we have to pray for that. <laughs> to a new place of, of seeking him privately so that when we end up doing something publicly, it, the presence of God is there, it's evident, it's known. You know, nothing is hindering it. Wow. Because we're tired or yeah. because I don't want to hear from God right now. Oh, I don't really want to serve or I don't really... Yeah. You know, like, we got to move all those things aside and, and look at what God is speaking for his people. Amen. And I just 
just know that a lot of people, I mean, we know that there's brokenness everywhere. We know that there's damage. We know that mm. there's people seeking, you know, answers for their problems and their pain. Um, but like Justin said, too, you know, in Luke 4, that when the disciples were together, the presence of God was undeniable. Mm. And, um, you know, and we want that to happen for this event and even for this ministry, just for that. When people, you know, join us, all of us together as a, as a body, not as, you know, a not as a more conservative Christian or not as a charismatic Christian. We just come together as believers, period. Yeah. Because yeah. we believe that Jesus died for us. And sometimes yeah. we just have to go back to the foundational truth yeah. and realize that maybe yeah. God is also bringing, you know, charismatic people mm-hmm. together with those that are, that are conservative to show them that there's more salvation and that it doesn't, yeah. just, it doesn't just stop at, you know, getting saved. That there, there's a lot more that God wants to do. God wants to make us whole. He wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us from mm-hmm. things even now. You know, but how can we do that unless we, you know, have these type of events to ignite something new in the body, in the church, you know, in us, all of us as leaders and as people, so that we can see God's movement be accomplished. Amen. Preaching, man. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah. That's a wonderful thought, and that's what we would like to invite you to come and join us together for the Global Worship and Revival Congress on September 19, 2021. And the last day, we were on 22, we for a full pack of ground of, for coming together for the Global Worship and Revival Congress. So we pray that God is going to begin to move as God's children are humble themselves, confess their sin, and begin to pray. It's just like in the story of Esther that we just mentioned a while ago, that the key to the revival, the key to the miracles, and the key to bring the heart of the people to come back is they seek God and they begin to pray. They begin to fast and they begin to search God and they begin to repent of their sins. And many times today that we are so occupied, just like our sister just mentioned, we are being so occupied with the world and we don't have time for God. Whenever we come back home, we feel exhausted. Okay? We lost the passion and we need to pray that God is going to revive that passion for God. We lost the word of God and someone was just asking uh, uh, one, of, one of the survey they met and they asked the Christian uh, who is Pinocchio. You know what, who is Pinocchio? The, 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 the character that have a long nose, mm-hmm. right? Oh, Pinocchio. Uh, Pinocchio, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, I like your version. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the, the question is, who was swallowed by a fish? And then, this is the answer, Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Uh, uh, it's not true sure now. Meaning to say, well, we lost the word of God. We don't even know the word of God. We don't want to go to church. We don't have the passion to go to church. We don't have the passion for the word of God. How much more to have the passion to be in the presence of God? And how many of you of us really, really pray? And if we pray and in the morning we wake up and say, Thank you, God, for a good, a good day in Jesus' name. Amen. And then when we chit chat, when we do go out for marketing, and when we begin to do the discussion or debate, when we talk hours after hours and hours. But when we talk about prayer, we, we don't, it cannot even last long for one minute. Oh, that's and this is what we need to see. We need to be revived. We need to pray that God is going to restore something back. It doesn't mean that we don't go to work. It doesn't mean that we don't need the in- income. It doesn't mean we don't need the promotion. But in all of these things, God is still the center of our life. And then, then, only then, and only then, the people will begin to look at us and say something wrong about you. Okay, put uh, wrong in the court word. Meaning something good about this one. I want to have the joy that he had. I want to have the tenderness that he had. I want to have the wisdom from God that he or she has. And that what we call the revival. So how many of us are longing for the day that we come come back to God, the day that we are hunger for the word of God, the day that when we are in the presence of God and we can say just like David, that one thing we are longing for is that to stay to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today, we want to watch TV forever. Today, we want to play game forever. Today, we just want to, 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 to do the project on our phone and computer forever. Today, we just want to go other forever, but not in the house of God. And that's why we need the revival. And you know that it's very funny. You see that even today, you know, there's certain kind of ego. If you are going to kill the baby ego, then you are going to be fine like something 5,000 years later. But it's okay to kill a baby. In the womb. Something wrong with that. 
So that's why we need the people, we need to pray that God will bring the people back into His blood and into His presence. Yeah. How about brother? Do you yeah. want to challenge the people? Yeah, I just want to challenge everyone to really trust God. I know there has been at least one experience, uh, one story where where we think I can't trust God. No, God is the most loving person, the most loving uh, God there is, and there's no other God besides uh, Yahweh, Jehovah, Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you that whoever you may see as God, it could be a spouse, you can see as a friend as your God, you can see your job as your God. And another definition for God is who we put above everyone else, who we seek allegiance to, who we seek uh, honor to, who we seek comfort from. Uh, we, I can go on from that. If we seek comfort through food, we think, seek comfort through people, that is becoming our, our God. Jesus is the one who's supposed to be our comfort. The Holy Spirit is supposed to teach us and do the comforting uh, at the same time. And so trust God to, to be your everything. Not your spouse, not your job, not yourself to be your everything. We can't handle that that weight. Yeah. And you have the word of God to encourage the people as we are closing today, tonight. intern student so I have to go there and I visit a church and I live in the ch in that church and in the morning four o'clock in the morning the pastor already wake me up and I'm still yawning and they just but I have to wake up because I live there for free so I have no choice <laughs> okay. and yet every day for one month it trans transformed my prayer line and then I see there's a man particularly this man from every day he raised his hand like this for five hours, non-stop, didn't drop down for five hours. I would just sit in there in order to observe and then he was praying and I was snoring or I would, whatever I do. Okay, sometimes I sleep and I wake up and he's still praying for five hours. And he said that for the last 20 years he had been praying like that. And if mm -hmm. you don't believe this is the supernatural power of God, raise your hand for five minutes, will you know? You will be exhausted, you will drop it down, right? But this man, five hours, and many other people, they pray again and again. Sometimes, at that time, I was still a very logical person. I said, these people are crazy. They have nothing to do. That's why they only pray. I do not understand about that one, right? <laughs> but now I understand. When I've been revived and transformed by God, I understand why they pray so much. And they, the more they pray, the more they want to be in the presence of God. And this is right. what we want. We pray for all of us here. And maybe some of you do not understand. Said, how, how come people seem that they have no, no works and then they just go and pray? It's not that they don't have work. It's not that I don't have works. I'm telling you, I may be a lot easier than you. But yet, prayer is still an important part of our life. Because that is where God will give us the power. And that's why we invite you once again to come to the Global Worship and Revival Congress. Uh, in order to activate the vision 20% with the theme of transformation and the goal is revival of America and of the nation at Anaheim Convention Center on September 19 to 22 and this is the call to pastor leaders and believers who come together for the unity mission and revival of the global body of Christ and this is also the call Global Worship and Revival Congress is also the call for the global body of Christ to carry out the vision of 20%. And I said, the vision is that to increase 20% of the population wherever we are to come to know Jesus. And lastly, 
Global, uh, Global Worship and Revival Conference is also calling the team across the nation to come to serve and bless the thousand of worshippers coming to the event. So we expect about 10,000 or even 20,000 people will come together. So bring the banner team, bring the celebrity team to give the testimony, bring the choir, bring the creative, creative team, bring the dance team, the drama team, media team, prayer team, singer team, worship team, whatever you can bring. And don't forget to bring money. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much and welcome to Global Worship and Revival Congress. And uh, today we study about Esther. And next time we're looking forward to study from the lines of Ezra and the revival. May God bless us. And thank you, my team. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.